I think that's probably one of the biggest disasters in gaming history. Easily, easily the speed run champion for live service <laughs> to total bankruptcy and <laughs> shutdown. <laughs> The day before, I, I didn't realize it was the most wish-listed game on Steam. Yeah, I had no idea about that. I had never heard of it. But I have a feeling, and it was announced in 2021, I have a feeling that a lot of that was facetious. And that's with, with platforms like Metacritic now, um, or even Steam reviews. There's a lot of room for people to be facetious when it comes to their feedback. Um, you know, the, the false, the false praise giving, right. giving something a 10 out of 10 because it's the funny thing to do. Well, Hey, facetious their own. <laughs> uh, That's a good one. And I love, I love how there's a term that I saw on Reddit and it is now being used. I, I see it starting to be picked up because for some reason at the end of 2023, all these games that came out. Uh, there were so many bad games that came out mm -hmm. and it started with Gollum yep. and the term is Gollum like. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And uh, the, the skull Island rise of Kong game is a Gollum like uh, the day before has been called Gollum like um, the walking dead bloodlines. Yep. So and what's interesting is aside from the day before, the other three are all like massive intellectual properties. So I kind of wonder if there's like some kind of scam going on where, you know, some poor dumb executive who is like, all right, I have the rights to Lord of the Rings. I can't go wrong. And then he just like gets catfished by some random asshole who's like, yeah, I totally have a video game studio. Give me the rights to produce this game. I'll take your money. We'll do a great job. And then like just outsources it to some like sweatshop in Malaysia and creates the most like hideous, poorly put together abomination and runs off with the cash. That's it happened so many times in a row to all of these big IPs. I feel like there's got to be something like that going on. <laughs> it would it would be just a weird coincidence if three games that were tried earnestly all were garbage in such a short <laughs> period of time. I just visualized in my head the, the CEO running away with a briefcase full of cash and like dollar bills. <laughs> no, no, are like not a briefcase. It's just a burlap sack. A burlap with a big dollar sack. Sign on it. <laughs> <laughs> but like dollar bills are like floating out of it, yeah, and he's got a, and, he, and he's got a fake mustache on <laughs> as, he, as he's boarding a plane. <laughs> so three of three of these games. So uh, the Walking Dead game, Gollum, and the the Skull Island game all came from Game Mill Entertainment, which. Um, Whenever I hear the name Game Mill, I think of Puppy Mill. And, <laughs> and, and I mean, yeah, it fits. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like this this company has just churned out terrible game after terrible game. So it's very, very obvious to see why there's got to be uh, some underlying uh, scam or something going on with this with this company. But then the day before it's by a completely different developer and different publisher. So they announced in 2021 that the day before is going to be this like open world MMO zombie shooter that was going to like redefine the genre, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of buzzwords to hype up the audience and the key art already sets off a bunch of red flags because the font for the day before is the exact same font used for the last of us. Ooh. <laughs> And also, how many of these uh, uh, zombie shooters do we have now? Like, what are, what are they going to do to set themselves apart? Yeah, if I was going to put out a game, I wouldn't try to put... Uh, it's not revolutionary. No, this is like... It's just like the others. But you're going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my marketing stick. Yep. It's like, yeah, we're bringing absolutely nothing new to the table at if all. If you like this other game, you'll like this one. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Did you like Ratchet and Clank? Then you'll love the day before. Don't ask us how we compare the two. Just buy it. The day before finally comes out uh, a few weeks ago. Or it goes into like, 
like early access, but in the gaming industry, because I worked for a game studio that their their quote unquote official release was putting the game on Steam, even though um, it was still in a in a beta phase. Mm -hmm. So they put the day before on Steam. Immediately, people are are like, "Yeah, this isn't an MMO. It, there, there's nothing about it that is an MMO. This is like a this is a single player game." And it's they built entirely using the Unreal Engine, and uh, there are bugs galore. People are, can't even get out of the tutorial because they're falling through the floor into the into the environment. It's a feature, yeah. And then once you, people who are actually able to get out of the tutorial, then are playing through just levels, and like the zombies are just kind of not like the AI is terrible. They're not the zombies aren't even like identifying the player. There's no effort to be put into taking them down. It's it's so obviously just. Like I, I've used this analogy before. I'll use it again. It looks like a game jam project game jam it's, be, being something that is coded in a weekend. Go ahead. Ek. Let's put it this way. You know how notoriously easy, uh, like the big review sites are it reviewing how there's all the memes about like your, your major review sites will be like, this is the worst game I've ever played. Seven out of 10. <laughs> Here, here's here's IGN's review unbearable the day before is easily one of the worst games I've ever played to the point where I'm afraid to continue running it on my PC <laughs> if you didn't manage to try it yourself you can probably count yourself as one of the lucky ones one out of ten Jesus Damn. that might be the most brutal like <laughs> major game review site review I've ever seen yeah because <laughs> even like Gollum and and uh, the King Kong game, I think those at least got like threes out of ten. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they they were given. There was some generosity given to at least the amount of effort that was put into developing the game. And IGN looked at the day before and was just like, "You didn't you didn't even put that into it." Yep. So the game comes out. It's getting eviscerated. Uh, the the developer uh, F Fantastic puts out a statement like it's like we can't wait for the future. Like we put a lot of work in this game and we're going to support it for years to come, blah, blah, blah. Uh, people start blasting it. Uh, they then try to defend themselves by saying that, I think they said that like, we're, we're a small development team. Shit happens. Yeah. Their exact words. Shit happens. <laughs> yep. Four days later, fro the developer shuts down. Ooh. Delete, deletes any trace of existence from the internet and then the day before shuts down as well steam takes it off their platform and, and issues refunds to uh anyone that wants them and Ouch. fantastic straight up says we're not making any money off this game because we have to give it all back <laughs> yep so it is uh probably i think that's probably one of the biggest disasters in gaming history Easily, easily the speed run champion for live service <laughs> to total bankruptcy and shutdown. <laughs> yeah. The, by the way, the exact Twitter exchange. So they posted on, and I'm going to keep calling it Twitter, by the way. Mm -hmm. This is on the 11th of December. They said, answer to those who ask for a refund, Mytona, who's the publisher. And we are currently working with Steam to allow refunds for any player who chooses to request one, regardless of game time. F Fantastic received zero dollars and will receive nothing from the day before sales. Damn. Uh, someone responded with unbelievable that you guys hyped this game up so much. And this is the end result. You guys are an absolute disgrace to the video game industry to which F Fantastic responded with. This was our first big experience. Shit happens. And they're scarred for life, and nobody in that dev team ever wants to code a game again. Yeah, that's. I mean, <laughs> like, that, yep, I'm going back to the banking industry. <laughs> that's the that's like the worst thing in the game industry because I remember when Infinite Crisis was shut down, there was a dude that worked at the studio I worked at who then did this big tell-all interview with um, one of the big video game publications, and they, you know, I res, I, I understand this. They shed some insight into just like because infinite crisis was it's it's up there with the day before in terms of like how long that game existed for which was not long at all like not even two months damn and i mean wb con continues to embarrass themselves to this day but that was definitely uh not one of their finest moments and 
uh, this developer, this guy who worked on the game, was really lamenting. Like, look, I put years of work into this, and this is what happened. Like, why do I, why do I want to continue working in this industry? Right. Yeah. And you know, as much, as much fun as it is to make fun of the whole situation, I don't doubt that even in the shittiest of these projects, there are earnest workers who are want to do a really good job. And it's, I'm going to guess it's pretty much always a failure of leadership, right? You've got publishers or, you know, upper management who are, who are saying, all right, we got to get this out the door now or very soon. And, you know, no amount of the actual people doing the work saying, yeah, that's a really bad idea. <laughs> this isn't ready. <laughs> this product is not ready to ship. Uh, and then it ships anyway. So, yeah. you know, uh, it is unfortunate. I mean, Game Mill was told uh, with Gollum, and then they ended up shutting down that whole uh, studio. Um, and I forget what the name of the studio was, but they're at uh, Daedric, I think. Daedric oh, Daedric. yeah, yeah. But they were straight up told, you, you guys need to get this game out. You have a year to develop it. And they're like, mm -hmm. bro, we need at least three. Like, no, you got a year. Uh, let's go back to 82 or 83, whatever year it was that ET for the Atari 2600 came out. And uh, Howard Scott Warshaw was given six weeks to develop it. <laughs> now, granted, it was possible back then, like, you know, video games right, looked like Atari. <laughs> yeah, but six but weeks tools and stuff probably weren't there either. So, you know, right. you didn't have a real engine to build a game. You're like, hmm, let's see if we can get this working in assembly for Fortran and something called, I don't even know, something else. <laughs> C. I don't even think Z existed yet. Right. Um, you basic. <laughs> yeah. He programmed it entirely on a typewriter. <laughs> oh, so Kotaku mentioned this because I was going to bring up is Kotaku mentioned that. So the servers for the game for uh, the day before are still online, but basically to anybody who was able to get it on Steam. Uh, <laughs> anyone who wants to get it now, you'd have to get a product key for the game. And right now on various reseller websites, you can only get them through the resellers, upwards of three hundred dollars <laughs> for a hard now, game. Yeah. <laughs> why isn't? I mean, supply and demand, right? Who's demanding them <laughs> to bring the price that high? <laughs> this reminds me of when the Szechuan sauce at McDonald's <laughs> was like massive because of Rick and Morty. And there was that kid who like, he, he bought like a couple of packets of it, turned around, went outside the McDonald's and it was like selling individual, like, like individual McNuggets, a single McNugget and the opportunity to dip it in the sauce to consume it for like 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> God bless America. <laughs> yep. Remember Flappy Bird? Remember that game? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you could get uh when when that was taken off the App Store, hundreds of dollars you could pay, thousands of dollars for an iPhone that happened to have it installed. And Flappy so, Bird wasn't even original. Is this just like um like people who I don't know, go to Cambodia so they can see the killing fields. It's just like people want to, I want to eat uh, the day before so I can witness the atrocities that took place here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just, I just want to go disaster touriseming through dead game worlds. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they just want to say they were part of it. But at this point, it's like, if you wanted to be part of it, you should have taken part when it was uh, only 50 bucks or whatever. When it yeah. was affordable. Now people are probably going to drop the hundreds of dollars on it and they're going to do it ironically, right? They're going to do it thinking. Exactly. It's like, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. They'll put it on a shelf or something. So selling the keys for like hundreds of dollars. There, there was a time where on eBay you could get, you could, you could buy a PlayStation four that had PT installed on it for like yeah. thousands of dollars. And that, uh, I mean, that was a different case because PT was free but then it was like completely erased from existence. I, th I guess there are methods. Oh, now right. Was it. that the Hideo Kojima? Yep. Thing it yeah. was ultimately the silent Hills trailer or teaser, but it was a, it was a basically an engine test, a demo of mm -hmm. what, what to expect in the, you know, when the, the, the game inevitably came out, which uh, it never did. But, um, people were spending thousands of dollars just to get a PlayStation four that had the game installed on it. Like people are crazy.
Yeah. Like, because they, again, they just want to be able to say they were part of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, but at least, like, if I, I would sooner brag about having fuck you money to spend on a console that has th- this very prolific, well received free demo pre installed on it, whereas having the fuck you money to spend on a, a product key for a game that's going to probably get shut down in the next week. Uh, so there you go. Uh, the day before, that is what that is. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to play it, you didn't miss anything. Um, and if you have the money to spare uh, while, <laughs> while you can, apparently Green Man Gaming, you can get the keys for if you have 300 bucks. Please buy literally anything else. <laughs> <laughs> buy Golem. Buy the King Kong game. 